my bad. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's the well recently sealed. Below, it feels off. Smells off, too. Back to the channel. It's King Lou coming at you. Another one. We back at it. Did I just repeat myself? Anyway, you know what? I'm gonna I'm start. Turn. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, no one there. Hello, is anyone here? I need a friend, or at least someone to spend my bountiful booty to. Money to. I realize how that sounded after I said it. I do have a lot of coin. I have about 500 schmeckles. Damn, is no one gonna open up? I'm gonna start shooting. Alright, y'all really wanna do this? Hope he wasn't at the door. I shot the wall. Alright, you ain't got no glass in your window. You do. Nah, let me be serious. Alright, I can inspect that. Can I even get down there? I can't get down there. How am I supposed to inspect it if I can't get down there? Aha! The ladder! <clears throat> no, not the ladder. Alright, let me just continue up this hill then. Well, since no one's home, I'm just going to take that. This requires a key. Or, again, for the hundred times, step on it, hit it with your sword, shoot it. It's a lock. Pretty sure it'll bust open. Hit it with the butt of your rifle. I'm getting the feeling I might run into something horrible here. It's jammed. I can't. I can't. Why would you shine on me? That seems kind of mean. They be free to return in glory to their faith. Did you kill the town? Fairfax Hostel. Friends, find fortitude oh, in our ass. success. Exiled from our homes by the devil's machinations, we congregate before the Lord in this new meeting house. We gather, we worship, we overcome. And we shall be well protected by the holy ward my son now makes under my instruction. For I have spent hours countless in your service, poring through books and papers, devouring the oeuvre of my peers, that our meeting house be safe. Fairfax Haskell, for whom the word pompous was invented. Half built? Yes. Open to the four winds? Yes. But already it is resplendent with our faith. A shining reminder of our renewed belief in better days. McCraith, Mr. McCraith. <laughs> I thought you... I thought you... What happy portent, what most excellent news. What blessings. 
I applaud your valorous deeds. O oh, fate, I say, dead, sir. I thought you dead. Maybe I am. Do not make light of such matters, my friend, for the devil's wrath is wide awake, and his claw scratches at our door, metaphorically speaking. Well, I'm alive. I promise. My friends, I shall deliver this sermon another time. The battle with the Devil's Legions is ongoing, and Mr. McCraith and I have much to discuss. Thank you, Lammy. Behold this miracle of ours, Mr. McCraith. Exiled we, yet in our darkest hour, we find the moral vigor to build this humble monument to resilience. But you and I must speak of darker matters. For we, erudite men of higher learning, know that evil yet walks. There is much work to be done. Indeed there is. Yes, yes. Forgive the inelegance of my welcome. You are alone. Do I surmise that Miss Duarte is no more? She knew the risk. I should have... It should have been me. I'd rather not talk about it. Um... I mean, yeah, they are banishers, but I don't want to come off as a douchebag. She knew the risks. So will I go in unto the king, and if I perish, I perish, so said Esther to Mordecai. Such wisdom, such courage. I'm so sorry for your loss. Grief is a journey, long and painful, but you do not walk the road alone, I promise you. Oh, I know. I know. In time, God healed my wounds. May you two find peace. Now, I regret that even at this most burdensome time for you, I must move with haste to business and beg once more for your help. What's going on? It must be serious if you're asking for my help. Since your defeat at the meeting house, the devil, heartened and emboldened, goes from strength to strength. He insinuates himself among my people, reveling in the suffering of the disease he unleashes upon us. It pits one against the other. Suspicion tears this community apart once again. All this to weaken my people and lead them away from the light of God. In times of disease, you need doctors, and I'm no doctor. We'll not treat the symptoms, we'll tear out the root. An agent of the devil walks among us. A witch? You must find her, or him, as it may be. You and I share great expertise. But I'm a man of position, while you, sir, are much more familiar with field work. Can I kill him? Go meet my people, walk amongst them, learn which of them secretly serves the demon, that we may expunge this evil malady from our body politic. What makes you think there is a witch at work here? Aye, sir, I'm a man of God and intellect. I can read the signs. When a so-called mystery disease afflicts half of my people overnight, there can be only one culprit. It is the devil's doing, sir. Probably through one of his servants. For you see, I understood immediately that the water in the well had been tainted. There are no strangers here. You could self-accept it. No one has fled. The guilty woman, or man, I suppose, remains within the village. As evil walks, the evil are emboldened, but this witch shall see her downfall. Or his, of course. As did the last one, as will the next. 
Some years ago, <coughs> you may have heard Thomas. <coughs> I made Excuse me. my name on the execution of a terrible witch. It pains me that I must do it once more. This illness, tell me of it. Upon my arrival here in the Harrows, I immediately set about protecting the place with consecrated tokens. Safeguarded from the curse, we all felt safer for a time. Then some devil poisoned the well, our only source of water, someone on the inside, mind. Spoiled water proves nothing. A wise point and well made, Banisher, if not for the fact that we have been, for months on end, under the obvious influence of a terrible curse. One way or another, the devil has found an agent among us. And who knows what nefarious ill-doing old Black Spy plans next. I noted your ghost wards with some interest. Ghost wards, an interesting name. I call them Sanctifiers, a name more palatable to my flock. Why did you not use them in New Eden when the curse began? It was more complicated to convince the whole congregation of the necessity to use magic. Here, people have more trust in my unmovable probity. This requires a great deal of occult knowledge. Where did you learn your craft? Etienne Roulet, one of the greatest demonologists of our time, is a good friend of mine. I improved upon his work. A man in your position must know what goes on in his own community. Why, of course, I know all that there is to know. Or near enough. Ask your question, sir. Ask away. How goes the colony? Sir, the body politic bears a heavy weight. Not content with weakening their flesh, the devil's evil attacks the people's hearts and minds. Until you expose the culprit, the harmony of this divinely beautiful commonwealth shall remain marred by suspicion and mistrust. Long story shortened, people are not getting along. How did you, a man of position and faith, become a, a demonologist? Ah, yes. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I shall explain, in the briefest manner possible. Though blessed with intellect and no little faith, I also had privilege. I had the means for an education, time and place with which to study. For a time, my father was a pupil of Henry Boggart, the great demonologist. He had the books, I had the aptitude. When he passed, I donned his mantle. My father taught me about duty. I have gifts, faith, Intellect. Position. I must protect them. I must use them to protect my people. This is my duty. This is my burden. Your son. How would you describe him? Lamentation. How would I describe him? I... Well, he's curious. Inquisitive, I mean, as opposed to peculiar. Although he has his moments there, too. I tried to teach him demonology, to make him the third generation of witch hunters. Ah, but he revealed no disposition. Occult knowledge could only obfuscate his... good nature. At heart, he is a naive boy who reads a lot and doesn't say much. I am no witch hunter. My business is with the lingering dead. For a fee, yes, I know. But you can't deny evil practitioners exist. A few years ago, I had to cleanse this community from such a threat. Why would she curse your colony? Why would anyone choose to separate from God's flock? I'm afraid some just want to see the world burn, Mr. McCraith. By the grace and charity of the good Lord, she was exposed. 
It was my honor to serve him in sending her to hell where she belonged. Her mask was a good one, as if butter would not melt upon her tongue. But you cannot fool a man of faith and intellect. No, sir, you cannot. You'll not mind me saying it, but for a Puritan paradise, you seem to get more than your fair share of witches. God has not forsaken us, but someone here does the devil's work. Find me a witch, Mr. McCraith. Return this place to the Lord. I'm a working man, Governor, but the Lord does seem happy to pay, so I'll do what I can. I'll take my leave of you, Governor. Of course. Outside, you must take the stairs. While you're with us, the first house on the left shall be your home. Another witch hunt. Another false accusation, you mean? Another blight on the lives of women? A real-life, actual banisher, here, in the Harrows. Okay, I would agree with her, because, you know, the witch, the witch trials was a horrible, horrible thing for women and whatnot. But there's literal witches in this game, and they have apprentices. The last part, you spent a minute with them helping her out, and she's on her deathbed. The new witch is coming up with all the techniques of learning, too. You can't be that oblivious or that stupid in your statements. I'm just, like... Okay. The writing is 8 out of 10. You're the governor's son, right? I... Uh, yes, sir. Lamentation Haskell. Friends call me Lammy. Oh, they would if I had any. Please, call me Lammy. I have so many questions, sir. <sighs> so many questions. But I suspect this is not the time. No, not the time. But perhaps you may help me anyway. Me? Why, if I can help, I'd be honored. So tell me, Lammy, what do you do? Uh, what? How do you spend your days? I assist my father, especially with the ghost wards. That keeps me very busy. When I can, I continue my research into the mysteries of life. Wildlife, mostly. If I can find any. Those that aren't dead have left New Eden. Who can blame them? Must be hard, being the governor's son and all. Is it? I don't know. I've never been anyone else's son. Hard to grow up in his shadow, I would have thought. Only if you like the attention, not me. I just want to read books and learn stuff. People leave me alone, mostly. Nerd! Uh, mostly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your father spoke of the pestilence. He did? Then, sir, you know as much as I do. If you have an opinion of your own, I'd be glad to hear it. Since you ask it, I believe a thing most vile assails us. An evil of origin unknown and perhaps unknowable. So the pestilence is part of the curse? Uh, y yes. Of course, the curse. Of course it's the curse. What else could it be? Those ghost wards are quite unique. They are, aren't they? Conceived by Etienne Roulet, but made by my father. Do you use them as well in your line of work? Not really. I mostly talk to ghosts. I don't repel them. Of course. Still, each tool has its purpose, and these troubled times we need all the tools we can get. Magic is glorious when wielded by the righteous. You seem to know a lot about it. Uh, oh, if only, sir, if only. I'm still learning. Many of the subtleties and nuances escape me yet. Your father believes there is a Harrow's Witch. Have you noticed anyone acting strange? I... I'd answer, sir, I surely would. Only things being as they are, everyone is acting strange. 
The curse brought illness, illness brought division. Division has led to strife. We could do with some healing, sir, we could. We need you to bring us peace. All right, let's get this game started. Good day to you, Lamy. Good day to you, sir. This probably gonna be, um, I'm probably gonna make this like an hour, hour and a half. It's a lot board. of talking. I think you can safely knock it over. Wait a minute. Dang, already. Okay, yeah, because I don't want to use up banish points. Damn it. You know, I think I want this one. Damn. You know what? Okay, yeah, I can do this. Alright. Rifle hits, refills, banish gauge. Weak spots hits. The rifle refill, banish gauge. Nah. Shooting with the rifle, banish gauge. Full increases rifle. Switch to a needle right after hitting an enemy. No. Banish an enemy restores 20% health points. Banish points gains reduce. No. Nothing over here. Can I? No, I can't. So it would just have to be something over here. Can I upgrade? No, I can't. Oh, each enemy hit by punch attacks, damage punch attacks by 50%. That does. That sounds a little bit better. You know, every single time she lifts him up I want y'all to remember she said I can't wait to hold you again
Where's the settlers at? Where's the people at? God damn. Can I break that down? Oh, I can't. Oh, no, I can't. That sucks. Okay. Can you find a way around the locked door? Give us this day our daily bread. Our bread, not our ale, our bread! Do you want us to starve? I should have the yeast. You know it, Mistress Barrow, you know it full well. If you want yeast, then grow your own. Just stick some in a jar and grow it and you'll have it forever. Now there is none. And it's my fault. Food is a staple and drink is a luxury. Give me the yeast. How many different ways do you need to hear it? Of yeast. There is no more. There is yeast. No more. Yeast? No. No more. There's no more shitting yeast. You're lying. You're pricking now, Mr. Cottle, and I am vexed. Go home. Go back to your work. Go to hell for all I care. Just go away. Good day to you, sir. Likewise. Red McCreath. You? A Perry Cottle. I'm the baker. What are you doing out here in the rustics? I'm a banisher. I'm looking for ghosts. Find no ghosts here, sir, nor demons. The governor, in his piety, sees to that. I envy your faith, Mr. Cotto. How's that working out so far? A man can do any number of things with his life. What drew you to baking? Well, any of a dozen reasons. I not bore you with all thirteen. That's also how old I was when my parents died. I needed work. The baker needed a boy. He was a hard man. His wife was a pure-hearted woman. Taught me well. It is hard work, but I love it. I love it, dear. What brought you to New Eden? Were they short a baker? Elsewhere, folks backslide. Here, we know the value of our daily bread, of God's own bounty. Here, the baker is near in position to a minister. What's the word around here? Ah, it's gossip you want. Mm, so be it. Recently, as I made my way to the mill, I saw Ishmael Lore sneak into Phoebe Walcott's barn, his arms laden. Now, I don't, don't know what he carried, but since then, he has seemed 
skittish. How's life in the Harrows? Does it taste sweet now? Or does it taste bitter yet? Life in the Harrows, sir, tastes like hard work. And so it bloody should. What can you tell me about the Governor? Pious man, of great eloquence. He likes a sour loaf, fresh from the oven, so warm, the butter melts right through. I trust him completely. He's devoted, he serves his congregation, diligent and mindful. Just like me. What can you tell me about Lamentation Haskell? He seems a good boy. Peculiar. Not the brightest. He's not like his father. Oh, no, not at all. Have you noticed anything strange lately? Changes in demeanour, odd comings and goings? Lucy Barrow goes picking plants. All furtive like. I've seen her. I've watched her. She puts them in her strange concoctions. Won't tell me what's in there. Maybe she'd spill it to you. And where might I find this Lucy Barrow? The ale wife, when she's not furtively picking her bitch, may be found in the ale house. I should go. God go with you. Good day, sir. Good day, uh, madam. Mistress, Lucy Barrow, the alewife. Red McGraith, the banisher. Alewife, is it? I'd never have guessed from looking at you. And what does an alewife look like, Mr. Banisher? She's got you there. Tell me about yourself, about your work. What are you, the census taker? I'm Lucy Barrow. I'm earnest, proud, clever. I'm a widow of 41. My husband and I ran a tavern in England. I was the brains, he was... Well, he was there. And if you call me Widow Barrow, I'll fetch my shears and dock your chestnuts. What brought you to New Eden? Freedom. Prosperity. The chance to watch good Puritan men drink till they are sick, even as they fill my purse. And chestnuts. I came for chestnuts. Now I happen to know that the alewife hears stories others don't. So, what's new? Want a story, do you? All right. Recently, I saw Phoebe Walcott walking strangely. She was hiding something under her coat. I don't know what it was, but she went into her barn, and when she came out, she no longer had it. I've seen her repeat the deed on several occasions. Not that I'm counting, nor that I care. How's life in the Harrows? As sweet as you would wish. When is life as sweet as one could wish? Well, that depends on how you define sweetness. Sweeter ale sells better, but the sweetness makes it weaker. Tell me about the governor. Not a big ale drinker, I imagine. Sadly, no. Perhaps if he had been, he might not have been such an arseworm. He's a man, afraid of me, an educated woman. He pries comes calling to check the contents of my pot. He's afraid. A scared little man. I am a woman of brains and means, but despite that, nay, because of it, I fear the witch hunt. What can you tell me about Lamentation Haskell? I hardly know him. He doesn't talk much. I suspect he's smart, but it's hard to tell. He's a little boy. Adorable, of course, but hardly interesting. Can I ask, have you noticed anything strange lately? 
If you have, be sure to tell me. I'll be sure to tell you if I see anything normal. Strange is the flavour of the hour, the week, the month and the year. Yet folks still gossip. They're suspicious, aggressive, impatient. Perhaps they hanker for normality. I suppose it figures. Well, if you hear anything that strikes you as unusual, do let me know. I'll take my leave of you for now. Have a good day, sir. How are you, Mr. Bachelor? I do not need the services of a heretic today. And nor do the people of New Eden. He seems pleasant. What does a teacher do with no kids to teach? Teaching, Drink. sir, takes preparation. At some point in the future, the roads will open and the children will return, and I, sir, shall be prepared. Why didn't you leave with the kids? For some time, I wished I had. Watching the children walk away near broke my heart. For many weeks, I was lost. But the Lord had other plans for me. I know it now. And they are? You shall see for yourself soon enough that you may bear witness. What news around and about? I'll make no report to a troublemaker like you. Seen anything strange of late? Do you speak of the disease eating at the fabric of our fair community? We've sealed the well, closed homes and houses, and said our prayers. It has not worked. Apart from that, have you noticed anyone behaving strangely? I have to ask. I have seen the alewife, Mistress Barrow, lurking by the well, hands in her pockets, clutching at her herbals. And as I think of it, before his house burned down with his wife and brother in it, Caleb Watson and the alewife had a sharp exchange of words. It were as if she'd cursed him. If there is a Harrow's witch, I'd start looking there. I'll steer you away from the idea that the alewife is a witch, but I'll look into all the same. I must take my leave of you, sir. God keep you, for I shall not. Lucy? Surprising. I'm curious to hear her take on all this. Then why am I able to... Uh, whatever. Lucy? Mrs. Baru, can I speak with you? All right. Speak. Can I ask you something? You may. It is delicate. You're the subject of certain rumors. Did you know this? What are you talking about? Why she got a long face? They say you burned someone's house down. Revenge, they say. They say that, do they? They talk, Mr. McCraith, while I work. They'll drink my ale, let them talk. Right. Is that all? They say you put herbs in the ale. Amongst other things, yes. You'll note that they also drink the ale. And don't you believe everything you hear? I'll take my leave of you for now. Have a good day, sir. I doubt she's who we're looking for. There was another name. Caleb Watson. Mr. Cotto. Good day to you, Mr. Oh, McCray. Jesus Christ. I should go. That face. That side profile. Anyone in here?
this an abandoned house? I thought that was a foot. Oh my god. The blindness is real. Okay, yeah, I was already in here. Is it you I need to talk to? Mrs. Baru. No, I already you? talked right. to you. Her long face. I'll take my leave of you for now. She looked and rough. I she looked rough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Life has not been kind to her. Looked like her face was stretched out. Let me find who I need to talk to. So, Ishmael Law. I have seen you in the meeting house. I have recognized the markings on your hands. I would have liked to have been a banisher. To track over the mysteries of our world. That must be something. You wanted to be a banisher? That's unusual. As a child, I met a banisher. I was impressed by the marks on his hands, the assurance in his demeanor. He made me feel safe. You do God's work, though you know it or not. Like Charles Davenport, I respected the minister a great deal. He's a terrible loss. You wanted to become a banisher. Why didn't you? I got married instead. Came to New England. Ruined everything. Well, damn. Wait a um, but you, Well, damn. <laughs> Tell me about folk around here. A vast subject that requires, perhaps, a more specific question. Tell me about Governor Haskell. A man like me does not get to know a man like him. He is a man of faith. We all trust him. That's all I can say. Tell me about Lamentation Haskell. Nice boy. Very secretive. I do not understand the things he says. Fortunately, he does not say them to me. <laughs> How about you? How are you feeling? Hmm. I've not been asked this in a long time. I am feeling a bizarre conflict between faith in the Lord and sheer unholy terror. Have you noticed by chance any strange behavior hereabouts? Our village has suffered much loss of late. Many of my neighbors have seen the disease take their loved ones. They get sick. And you never see them again. Maybe you hear them moan as you pass their house. But then the moaning stops. In times like these, pray tell, if a person was behaving strangely, how could I possibly tell? I'm sorry, but I can tell from the look in your eye that you've someone in mind. Hmm. What? You said I, right? Not eyes. Maker. Perhaps because of illness, or through the loss of his loved ones, but whatever has befallen the poor man, uh, he seems to have lost his mind. I'll see you later, Ishmael. Anytime, sir. Caleb Watson. We keep hearing that name. Let's pay him a visit. Where? Okay, thank you for showing me the direct... Looks like we found the cobbler's shop. Smells. It's justice. Start anew. Shite on these people. They can't hurt us. But how could you make him kiss it again? Oh, there. Are you alright, sir? We're closed. Uh, uh, oh, now. Out with you. Leave. Leave. I can tell from your sorry demeanor that you won't mind me asking you a couple of questions. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. I'm searching the area for evidence of witchcraft. And you, I can tell, are itching to help me. Show your shite and shapes, goose peddler. No witches here. Only myself. 
Caleb Watson. You're a happy fellow. Tell me a tale. What have you heard round about lately that might be of interest? Gossips for shite bags. Not being a shite bag, I don't gossip. The governor bade me make the rounds. Is anyone acting strange? Why would he ask you that? Everyone keeps secrets. And I have a talent for uncovering them. I ain't got no secrets. I ain't done no wrong. Search me house, if you don't believe me. Say for yourself. And when you're done, if you're any kind of man, you'll come back here, doff your cap, apologise, then shite off and never come back. If you're looking for someone acting strangely, I think you've found your man. I'll be leaving you alone for now. A man content with his own company is never alone. <laughs> you hear that? Good one, right? This is wrong. It's wrong, wrong, I tell you. No, take. Don't read. Take! There we go. Being courted by two brothers at once rarely ends well. Personal experience. Don't go there. Hugh Bachelor said Lucy Barrow cost the house and it burned down. The house burned down, and I suspect the rest is nonsense. What's this? It's not metal, not wood. Bone, it's bone. Lovely. Ishmael Law said Watson lost his wife and brother. At the same this time? It's wrong. It's wrong, wrong, I tell you. He's surely haunted, but where's the ghost? I think we need to talk to Caleb Watson. You've done enough sniffing, hmm? Tired of the smell of your own ass. What is with your fixation of the uh, arse? And or shite hole. I, I feel like you you'd have a you, you have a very 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 can't think of a word interest in it. <laughs> you said you had no secrets. That was a lie. Am I right? Everyone has secrets. I can smell your secrets from here, mate. A pox on you, and a pox on your questions too. You'll not take him head on. You must take your time. Outflank him. There's burned debris out back. I found bone in it. Where does it come from? You must have little business if you spend your time sifting through my rubbish. It came from the house. Probably. I read your letter to Ruth. It's clear you loved her. Were you telling the truth about Alexander's infidelity? My name is Caleb Watson. And before God... And all present, I swear that the letter I wrote to Ruth was a load of shite. Lusting for his beloved Ruth, I set out to ruin Alexander's name, because I'm a greedy little prick. You're frank. You don't sound like you regret it, though. No. The past's the past. 
Dead and buried. My brother is but a lingering memory. It was terrible what happened to your wife and brother. It might have helped if you'd mentioned that. You must be grieving. Do you mind if I ask where they're buried? Shite on me, shite bag brother. And shite on you too. They're both deep in the dirt up at God's Acre, and I'll speak no more of it. What's going on at God's Acre, Caleb? Shite off with your God's Acre, and good riddance to both. God's Acre concerns you not. You need to tell me what happened here. Stop hiding. Nothing happened. I buried... I buried all... Quiet, you. And you can shite off. Taking your nothing happened with you. Whatever happened, it happened at God's Acre. Fear not. You'll bugger off soon. They both will. Alright, let's go, uh... Let's be honest, we about to take him out. We're not gonna... Well, he ain't gonna have no more worries, but... Yeah, let's go ahead and end this. Wait, which way am I going? I ain't got time to get lost. Okay, I'm going the right way. Oh, that startled me. Thoughts on Caleb? You first, young man. Haunted. To the point of madness. Ruth and Alexander, maybe? Maybe. But something feels off. We jump to no conclusions. Instead, we gather proof. God's Acre? God's Acre. Too heavy to lower from your side. Is there something I can shoot? No. Huh. Is there another way around? No, this is... Actually. No, that look like mountains. How do I... I mean, it's in there. <gasps> Where would I aim it? Because there ain't no way I can go down there. Oh. <coughs> 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 
shut up. I don't want to talk about it. Here we are. Let us find the graves of Alexander and Ruth, and whatever got Kate up acting so strange. I'm sorry, that was gonna bug me. Watch out! Expect a possession! <laughs> Is that a female? I think I see a patella. Lovely. I think I see a whole body dug up. Robbers. Yes, but what exactly were they stealing? The femur or the patelica. The hip bone connected to the leg bone. Ruth Watson. There's another grave beneath it. What? That's lazy. Undertakers did this, they should find other work. I doubt there's a job on earth that suits whatever did this. Oh! Decoys. To distract wayward spectres. Rudimentary. Someone's had a little training. I was about to say, how did they do that, but... They, they took their time. Here did lie Alexander Watson. Did Caleb take their bodies? Someone did. And he's at the top of my list. Well, they made quite the mess. Perhaps the decoys may show us the way. Follow the path. Don't get too close. I'll try. This way, more of them. <laughs> that 
That's what I was talking about when I said don't get too close. Technically, that was you that got close, but all right. All right. Okay, that wasn't even close. Press the wrong button. Demonology. I should have known. Did I put this here? God's green hell is this? Fight now, talk later. Once more with feeling. Physical to spectral, they do that. Fucking bots. I think you could take on a ghost. We say, don't you? Move! Ah, oh, that's a nice trick. Running away, are we? Yeah, it looked like it. Stay down. A vicious scourge that despises the living. In these lands, what a surprise indeed. Shrines now? With bones. It's like Lady Blackwood's boudoir around here. Moments from the past are still here. Oh, there, fella. You're nasty, aren't you? Nasty, yes. But also shoddy. It's very poor work. I mean, yeah, he was already dead. Are you sure we didn't miss anything? With a bit of luck, we'll find what we need. Alright, I need parchment. Oh, I thought it was more. Okay, uh. 
Where would I find parchment? Somewhere in the graveyard? Did you feel that? It's close. Oh, there we go. What is this? It looks like a butchered version of the ritual of lesser palingenesis. The ritual of... that ritual? The one that brings someone back? That ritual? Yes, that ritual. Oh, that was a sign to bring her back to life. Now step from the shadows. <sighs> I don't want to hear your mouth, woman. That's not the ritual I'd have used. I summon you now! Fair enough. I thought it was a benevolent spirit. <sighs> Messed this up, didn't I? Pascal Fogach smile. As flesh unto verb, as verb unto heart, as heart unto flesh. Death's knot is unsevered, and I shall cut it. Caleb Watson invoked a ghost without a body for it to inhabit. Oh, why would still So it took his. Caleb is no longer Caleb. Oh yeah, we killing him. He got the wrong ghost too. He used pieces of his wife and also of his brother. Ruth, Alexander, Caleb could be any combination of them in there. Let's go find out which. That meat bag is finna be, um, laying bare. I have another in sight. Why do I miss? Watch out! Oh, I hate you, you winch! Take on a ghost. Oh yeah, I know all your moves says, but I couldn't kill you before. I need to take out that fish. I mean, not the fish, the um, that boat from the last part. I need to take care of that. Should I be that the ritual will work? Caleb's work was poor. Your work will be good. Cold feet? No. Not now, not ever. The ritual shall work, and all shall be well. I promise. I don't know if I should believe you. I mean, I know it. Ne never mind. Ne never mind.
hush now. All is well. Nothing bad will ever come to us again. Shite off. We've been to God's Acre. Quite a tale it told us. You're not Caleb, are you? Or at least not entirely. Ah. Can't fog you. Alexander Watson. Long tale short, Caleb tried to bring his dead wife back. And I live here now. So many questions. Where to even start? Um... Did he bring you back by accident? That's a good place to start. He was trying to bring his wife back. How did you end up in the mix? Caleb made a fine cobbler. A poor brother. A worse husband. And a truly terrible witch. The ritual went to shite. Because... Of <laughs> course he did. <laughs> Do both of you share Caleb's body? Share? <laughs> no. This house of flesh is mine. But because I am a generous man, I allow my brother to live in the cellar. We were twins. I was the rotten half, they said. But who's the rotten half now? There's something else you should know. If you don't know it already, I'm not alone. I completed the ritual. My darling Ruth is in here too. Caleb was no saint, but this is hellish grim. Does he deserve it? Aye, he does. And it's not like I killed him. He's alive in here somewhere. Watching me ruin his name. He can hear me now. Destroying his reputation as I had to hear him destroy mine when he painted me a fornicator. How oh, nice. He took our love, Ruth and mine, and killed it. Now our love's reborn, and he can do naught but sit and watch. Caleb was a cat. Shite on him. Let him suffer. You died trying to save Ruth from a burning house. True. True. And where was Caleb while all this was happening? He was there. He stood rooted in place, frozen in fear. And then it was too late. He could do nothing but watch us burn. Caleb's name was ruined then. We're just putting the boot in. You used the ritual to bring Ruth's spirit into Caleb's body. Why? Love moves a soul to strange endeavours. We deserve a better life. This whole thing was a shy I show. I myself to claim in it. You know you've failed, right? Look at yourself. Smell yourself. You can't live a life in that state. That's my never mind, not yours. If you don't like the smell, you can shite off. I'll not make our lives your business. I'd like to hear this from Ruth. May I please speak with her? No! We've carved ourselves out a little happiness at last. I'll not have you break it. Please. So what you're Leave telling me alone. is, you got a woman Give stuck in a man's body. We need to speak to her. One way or another. There's a joke here. He I'm just anything. Perhaps the house no, I'm not died in will. You're well placed to see what goes on around here. Help me out. Have you seen anything noteworthy? I've made a point of keeping people away, but I, I see things, and I take note. Lammy Haskell. Any thoughts about him? The Haskell boy. What about him? He's weird. Talked with Caleb about nonsense. Both of them were full of shite. That eyebrow twitch was a nice touch. What's your take on the governor? 
My brother gave him the glad hand act, and the governor lapped it up. Askell's opinion of himself is far too high. To win his favour, you need only prop him up. He dragged my name through the dirt. Shite on him, and his so-called eloquence. What use is a silver tongue when your heart is yellow? Tell me about folk here. Who stands out for you? What think you of them? What think I of they who shunned me? Gulled by my black-mouthed brother. What think I of malicious fools for whom I had to die to be redeemed? I'd say a curse upon them. <laughs> but tis too late. The curse has already come. How goes the settlement, would you say? It's going to hell in a shitting handcart. Not that I care, mind. But there's sport in guessing who shall live and who shall die. Hope they find that witch, though. Can't have witches about the place doing the devil's work. God damn it. I'll be leaving you alone for now. Alone? <laughs> not really. Hush now. You're not funny. All is well. Nothing but Ruth and Alexander are having an affair in her husband's body. I'll not judge. Not how much I want to. Something feels wrong. Something about Ruth. If we find the ghost tie. We can talk to her. Oh, is it down the um, down that elevator? That's it. Let me see this real quick. Okay, then yeah, that's it up there. The house that burned down. The roof fell in with them inside. There's a lot of debris. Is it? How do I get in? Okay, yeah, I can jump there. Oh, I... Do I move the cart? No. Alright, no way to go around. Doesn't look like there's anything for me to shoot. Uh, you know, wait, I could probably go down the elevator now. Nope. Let's back here. Wards, you're on your own. Yes, yes, you told me many of a time, woman. I'm back. I didn't expect that. At long last. I wonder if any of the villagers hear that. Why would I want to push it? Where would I even push it to? Oh.
Ain't no way this didn't get burnt up. Time must be nearby. Picking up something spectral nearby. Oh. Whoa. All right. Um. Smoke inhalation? Of course. Ruth's heart binds them like a bushel of rotting corn. That was a better analogy. Ah. Oh. All right, good artistry. This work shows real sensitivity. Caleb? Maybe. Not Alexander. You. What I do you have there? We've just learned a little of. Stop right there, you rank rump! Whatever you found, it ain't yours. You buried Ruth's heart in the ashes of the house that killed her. I find that odd. You, a ghost, went digging in the ashes of a dead woman's house. You're ill-positioned to call me odd. Don't think I haven't felt your presence before. Stow your tongue while I speak with Ruth. Ruth, can you hear me? Can you speak? Pock off and die. I'm in charge here. No. Hush ye, Alexander. I'll speak. I'm Ruth. I hear you. I'm Antea Duarte. We're here to help. Oh, I'm glad. Please, end this nightmare. Help me. Oh, go to hell in a bag of shite. We're fine. And you have not the right, you hear? You've not the right. Hear my voice and show your face. No more does he silence me. We may speak. Help me, please. Who taught Caleb the resurrection ritual? To say it was taught would mean he'd learned it. He read it off a page. As a sorcerer, Caleb makes a fine cobbler. Think about Caleb, he was a good listener. As he worked, clients would bend his ear. The Haskell boy, for one. As Caleb pinned the governor's shoes, young Lammy would talk magic. N nonsense, really. But Caleb was listening. Wait. Lamy Arsko gave Caleb the resurrection ritual. After Lamy mentioned the ritual, Caleb became obsessed with it. He begged. Lamy, in his misplaced generosity, gave it. Caleb was intent on dark work. Lamy furnished written instructions. Caleb's letter changed your life. How did it feel at the time? Tore me in two. I loved Alexander, but I deserved to marry a man who would be true. Caleb seemed decent. I, I believed he loved me. I thought I married the better brother, but I'd married a liar, a liar, and a devil. And yet, not even he deserves this. 
No one deserves this. I don't know. You just said you try to. You you you. It, ooh, this is a whole whole mess. You just said you tried to marry the better man, and you was like, bruh, like. <laughs> I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying, but you compared the two and was like, okay, this one better. I'm finna go with this one because of kindness. Cause I don't, did you even take the chance to get to know each of them, or would you? Maybe you deserve this fate. I don't know. How did they treat <coughs> you with adoration? I was an idol. Worshipped, yet unloved. He was the sculptor and I was the statue. Smiling down, unmoving from my pedestal with nothing to say. Now I'm sewn into a festering sack with the quivering remnants of my husband and the angry ghost of his dead brother. Please, let me out. Ruth. Your husband Caleb's botched resurrection ritual brought you back, but allowed his brother Alexander to take you hostage. Once we deal with the Watson brothers, you shall be free to ascend. Do what you must. I'll suffer it if it leaves me free to go. No! We can stay. Please, Ruth, let us stay. Look at you. Your counterfeit, a sham of a thing. Your so-called life is no life at all. Caleb lied and stole your love. But when the time was right, you lied and stole his body. We're ending this nonsense now. Alexander, yours is no romantic fable. There is no moral to this tale. You're a hostage taker. Nothing more. No, Caleb can go to hell, for he well deserves it. But Ruth and I are in love. Greedy men fight over a woman as if she were a thing. I'm done with that old story. Time to tell a better tale. Ruth is free to go. I shall have my rest now. Thank you. Yeah, um... No. No purpose. Are they gone? Am I speaking with the cobbler, Caleb Watson? That you, Caleb? I, I, I think. Yes, that's me. Or it was me, once. For my bastard brother was my hollow keeper. You're not entirely innocent, though. If you'll permit the unfortunate expression, there was more than one of you in it. My brother deserved damnation, and you gave it to him. I am an imperfect man, but, uh, but if you're considering the same for me, I'll not go without a fight. I too am an imperfect man. I have mercy and patience in limited supply. Let's not test those limits further, eh? Alright people, I'm gonna end it right here because this video is long enough. Glad we got to save Caleb. He going through it. If you wouldn't mind, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. It's been King Lou coming at you. Everybody take care. Everybody stay safe. Hope everybody eating well. And I'm gonna see you on the next one. Peace.